why being the super nice person is super frustrating for your life and career. If you're watching this video, you most probably fall under one of these three categories. One, you try your best to make people comfortable, but find it difficult to say no. Second, you're very blunt and you tell people to their faces whatever goes on in your mind. Third, you're here to explore and learn something new. Hi, my name is Gurleen and I'm the founder of Zenith School of Leadership. I have helped more than 20,000 people to become impactful communicators and influential leaders in their life. And they're all working in Fortune 500 companies around the globe. I post live sessions every week. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please click on the subscribe button below and ensure to turn on the notifications so that you're not missing any opportunity to learn these soft skills that not everyone can adapt in their life. Now let's talk about the three categories that I mentioned in a little detail. What do I mean when I say that you fall in the first category? That is, you try your best to make people comfortable and you find it difficult to say no. So you're someone who tend to put people's needs before your own. And you hardly ever run into disagreements because that is one thing you always want to avoid. Now that's on the outside. A sweet, agreeable person everyone likes to be around. But on the inside, you feel taken for granted, overlooked and torn in an internal battle. Especially if you feel disrespected and you choose not to stand up for yourself because what if they feel offended? Again, the ever-present nice person in you speaks up. Secondly, if you fall in this category, that you're very blunt and you tell people to their faces whatever goes on in your mind because you believe people should know and what you're saying is the truth. You find it difficult to not express yourself. Now, even at the risk of offending or hurting someone, which is far from your intention, you feel like the truth must be spoken out without any sugarcoating so that it benefits other people. Now, this must have landed you in unwanted conflicts, being perceived as inconsiderate and maybe sometimes tone deaf. Now, maybe you're watching this video to find clues as to why what you're doing is the best thing to do. Or maybe you're considering making some changes and trying to find a middle ground between being frank to your face and somewhat polite and agreeable. If this is you, then hang in there till the end. I have the exact solution you're looking for. Now, if you fall in the third category, that means you're here to explore and learn something new. You're neither too agreeable nor too disagreeable. You do manage to strike a balance in most situations unless they become too tricky when you have no choice but to lean towards becoming one of the first two. Now, if you are in any of these shoes, let's start with why being nice is more of a problem than a solution. You see, being the nice one is often an escape route from conflicts or potential of a conversation snowballing into one. Nice people, they fear offending others and they dread as much as the possibility of saying or doing something that might trigger a negative emotion in others because they really care about how do people think about me. This also means one thing. Nice people have that super ability to read people's faces and see through their body language for signs of displeasure. While this is an amazing ability to have, for nice people, this ends up feeding their overthinking tendencies. Think of it this way. Let's call a nice person Robin. Now, Robin's manager wants their team to work on the holidays. Even after the team has pulled much overtime in the past month to compensate for the increased overload, which after deliberation, the manager did say that I leave it to your personal choice. Now, most people, they choose the holiday to unwind and shake off the exhaustion. A few choose to stay back and work. Robin hasn't decided yet. Now, Robin notices subtle changes in their manager's temperament, especially around those people who chose the holiday. Even though it is nothing obvious, Robin can see for a fact that something's odd in the way the manager has started behaving around those people. 
And Robin is thinking that how bad is the manager going to feel if he too chose the holiday? Robin feels bad for the manager and more so, he doesn't want to upset them. So despite being exhausted and in clear need of some wind down time, Robin takes up the work during the holidays. But wait, now Robin is still feeling bad. What about his family who wanted to spend that quality time with him? What about the commitment he had made to his daughter? You see, as nice people, the predisposition to people pleasing becomes a strong driving factor and makes you base almost all your decisions on what people would like from you and how people would think about you. You see, another rather painful aspect of being nice is having this lingering feeling of being disrespected and always being the redundant part of every relationship. As a nice person, you tend to swallow disrespect, allow other people to take you for granted, and you close your eyes to how unfairly people may have treated you. Not because you want to, but because even at the receiving end, you don't want to upset or offend them or look bad before them. And even if you do end up acting in the spur of the moment and standing up for yourself, you end up lashing out and expressing all your bottled up emotions in rather an unintended way, especially around people that care about you. And when you cool down and you reflect on the situation, you go on a guilt trip mode. And you say, why on earth did I even speak up at all? I should have simply stayed quiet. Now, what if I said too much? What if they're feeling bad? And even if you express yourself civilly, you still blame yourself for being the mean one. When you could have just as well avoided saying anything that could have looked like a confrontation. Now think about all that I have said. You're not getting due recognition and you're always feeling like a pushover in most situations. People know that you are the go-to person to fix problems and get the task done. They know that you are the one to lay all their extra tasks on. But when it comes to acknowledging you, they either keep mum or they shift this acknowledgement to someone else in the team. When it comes to getting promotions, rather than you who worked so hard and despite of, instead of just doing your job, you were someone who was doing others job as well, somebody else has chosen over you. You don't get your due and neither does your opinion get its fair share of consideration because you find it dreadful to engage in anything that might lead to a conversation, a difficult conversation, a confrontation or a disagreement. The refuge you seek in being nice is not sheltering you from the negative outcome, but it is rather exposing you to stagnancy and confining you to always be that supporting character in the shadows. In the short term, you might find it easy to dodge conflicts. Or should I put it this way, to avoid landing on the negative radar of people. But in the long term, this adaptation strategy would become the very reason you feel disengaged from yourself and your work. And then you would wonder, why am I demotivated? Why do I not work with the same kind of enthusiasm anymore? Why am I losing my energy? You see, here's the thing. No one is asking you to get into the mean mode at the slightest provocation. Neither am I asking you to stop being nice. Being nice is a rare trait to find. And if you're nice, always remember that you have something that most people wish they had. You cannot fake being nice till you become nice. That will worsen situations even more. If you're nice, chances are you're already empathetic, you're very considerate and making people appreciate your presence, even if they don't say or act like it. What we are aiming at here is to strike that fine balance between being nice and drawing boundaries. You can be firm and polite in the same sentence without hurting anybody's feelings and still get the dignity and credit that you deserve. Now, before I move forward and tell you ways, if you're enjoying this video and if you find this valuable, please click on the subscribe button right now if you have not done already. I post value videos on subjects that impact your personal and professional life on a daily basis. Now, if consistent growth is what inspires you and self-personal growth is what 
makes you the person that you are. Make sure you turn off the not notification button so that you don't miss anything that I post every week. Now let's see how you can draw that balance between being nice and still be able to say no with grace in a few quick steps. The first way and the most important thing, I want you to face your biggest fear with a twist. I'm sure you're already guessing that I'm going to ask you to say no a bit more often, especially if you're overwhelmed. Partially true. I want you to be comfortable while saying no and to do so in a way that doesn't upset the other person. The icing on the cake, isn't it? So in cases where you feel overwhelmed and you're unable to keep up with the commitment, here are a few simple ways you can say no without entertaining any fear. First, acknowledge what the other person has said. Don't start with a no. Start with saying, this is a great idea. It's an amazing plan. Thank you for the opportunity. I'm glad that you thought that I could be a part of this. And then state why you're declining this, in not more than two sentences. Say that, you know, I would have loved to do this for you if it was not for this ABC that is holding me back. And at the moment, I would have been up for it if I would have been free with this. Now, don't over explain or over justify your stance. Two sentences, remember, keep it short, honest and open ended. The second thing that I want you to do, set clear expectations. You know, many times nice people, they find it difficult to know what is expected out of them and they compensate for that by being extra nice. I want you to seek clear expectations from your manager, your superior, your team members. Once you know what you're aiming for, it becomes a lot easier for you to navigate through your internal emotions. This conversation may sound intimidating at first, but there is no other way around it. You have to take the bull by its horn in some cases. I want you to understand that asking what exactly is expected out of you is not derogatory. It's not telling the other person you're not intended, you don't intend to do the work. It is just making clear. So the way is simply go ahead and ask. This is what I have understood. Paraphrase what you heard. Simply paraphrase and say, what I have understood is this is what I'm expected to do. And then if you're wondering whether or not the other thing is to be done, just add a statement and simply ask, do you also want me to do this or you just want me to finish this first part and then discuss it with you? That way is you save a lot of time, energy, and you build some dignity and happiness for yourself because you're not just living your life in that grind. Third, I want you to introspect. Don't guilt up. Instead of blaming yourself for every mistake or presumed failure, introspect. Think about what happened, why it happened, and what you, do, you have done differently to avoid this from happening. The more you enter into a guilt trip mode, the more you sink into the victim mentality of blame games and self-depreciation. Think about it this way. You want people to appreciate your hard work because you're a hardworking person. That is why you absorb more tasks, more work than anybody around you. Now, if you don't appreciate yourself, how do you expect the world or people around you to appreciate you? The first person that you need to convince that you're a good person and you deserve appreciation is no one but you yourself. Start appreciating what you do from today. Keep a journal, write down the things that you have done good today. And at the same point of time, also write down WWW, what went wrong? Pen them down and chart a course of action to avoid falling into the same loop again. Now this will also put you into the habit of self-reflection and gradually it is going to increase your self-awareness. Finally, fourth, I have said this many times and I'm gonna say it again get a mentor. You see, mentors have the capability to see in you what even you did not know that you're capable of. Find yourself the right mentor who can help you reverse this negative aspect of being nice and preserve the constructive aspects in you. Now, while looking for a mentor, I suggest you go through their testimonial section. See if you find any case, any story that is similar to yours. If you find that connection, read about how the mentor has specifically helped their mentees and explore the mentor's content online. Whenever possible, you could go ahead, 
fix a strategy session, ask your questions, and then see how this mentor could help you come out of this guilt trip mode and other self-depreciating habits that you've gotten into. Now, for people who are frank and you want to be a bit more nice, like I said, you're already nice. Don't think about being more nice. Don't think about upsetting other people. You need to learn about striking the balance between firmness and politeness. That's the key. If you want me to help you, I want you to check this link in the description and learn how you can strike that balance without losing your authority or allowing people to walk over you. And you still want to know more? Speak with one of my experts free of cost and discover the hidden layers of communication that you can leverage to grow in your career. Now, if you found this video helpful, go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe, and share this video with at least that one friend who you think needs personal and professional growth. Click on the like button, subscribe, share with as many people as you can, because I'm going to post more such content that you're never going to learn from schools. Thanks for watching, and I'm going to see you in the next one.